This is a Sansui model 6060, and it was brought to me for service because it has a channel out, lamps out, and the client wants it recapped. Released in 1976, the 6060 was a mid-power offering from Sansui, rated at 44 watts per channel. After some testing, I noticed that both channels produce sound, but the left channel bias shows zero and won't adjust. The controls are crackly, and the phono amp has some high frequency roll off. All of the Sansui receivers from this era have fusible resistors in them that tend to drift massively over time, causing a plus of issues. All the fusibles on the other board tested reasonably fine. Let's see how these test. Testing them out of circuit is going to give me a more accurate idea of the values. It is 32k. That's in the left channel too, so that could totally be our problem. And this one actually tests fused, so this one's not even working, and this one's in the right channel. Since I have the board out, I also went ahead and tested the transistors to see if any of them might be in partnership with those faulty resistors and keeping the bias from adjusting. Nothing seems bad there. And we have bias, so it was just those fusible resistors. We'll let this sit for a little bit, and then I'll adjust it. And sure enough, it's settled in a little bit high, shooting for about 15 millivolts. That's great. Something I've noticed is that the output caps on here don't drain. They don't have bleeder resistors, and so I'm going to make sure I drain off all this power before I unplug the driver card. Being able to remove this board made the process of replacing 25 parts so much faster. And while I was at it, I also replaced 18 parts in the power supply and protection circuit. This feasible resistor was shorted out and somebody had actually soldered a 1.8 ohm resistor. These are 2.2 underneath it on the back side of this board here. Next, I wanna take care of these lamps. Replacing these fuse style lamps with warm white diffused LEDs. And the reveal, look at that. It looks pretty much just like it, it would stock, except just a little bit brighter. Next up, we're gonna tackle the last remaining issue, the rounded off high frequency in the photo stage. But first, I cleaned the controls using a quick dry contact cleaner to push out dust and debris, followed by some air to dry them and deoxid D100L dripped on the wipers of each control to protect and lubricate the graphite trace. I also cleaned and polished the RCA inputs on the back panel, then actually got into the phono amp. So I replaced all seven electrolytic capacitors first, and I finished it off by replacing these six transistors and cleaning all the flux off the backside. Look at how much cleaner that square wave is now. And with all of the issues fixed, I now want to do a couple of upgrades, starting with new speaker terminals. And finishing with updating the preamp. This preamp board is a pain to get out of here. I had to unbolt the whole front of the chassis so that you could slide it out for a total of 16 parts replaced. And it now puts out 52 watts per channel, which is actually seven watts per channel higher than when I first got it before the work. That's a total of 80 parts replaced. And it sounds pretty great. 